Summary of Machinal by Sophie Treadwell The play Machinal has nine scenes, or episodes. Before the curtain goes up for the first time, you can hear machines moving as people work steadily on typewriters, adding machines, and other similar machines. When the curtain comes down and the lights come on, the workers mutter to themselves as they go about their work. Between the phone girl's happy welcomes, the adding clerk's spoken math, the filing clerk's murmuring, and the stenographer's letters, they talk about a young woman named Helen who is late to work. They say that this is the third time Helen has been late in the past week. Helen tells them that she had to get off the train because she felt stuck when she finally shows up. Her co-workers don't care about her problems. Instead, they tell her that George H. Jones, her boss, has been looking for her. The phone girl says, he's yelling for you. Helen's co-workers talk about how much Mr. Jones likes her and wonder if he'll ask her to marry him when she goes to his office. Then Helen comes back and sits still in front of her machine for a moment. When the stenographer asks her why she's not working, she says that the machine is broken and she can't use it. When Mr. Jones comes out of his office and puts his hands on Helen's shoulders, her co-workers ask her why she jerked when he touched her. She just says, nothing. Just his hand. Then, as she sorts the mail, her co-workers talk openly about Mr. Jones's interest in her and say that her job relies on whether or not she takes his proposal. They say that she will be fired if she says no. If she says yes, she won't have to work anymore, and every morning she'll get breakfast in bed. As they talk, the machines click and rattle, and Helen thinks out loud about Mr. Jones's proposal, saying, marry me, wants to marry me, George H. Jones, George H. Jones and Company, Mrs. George H. Jones, Mrs. George H. Jones. Helen keeps going like this until the lights go out. In episode two, Helen and her mother are sitting in a kitchen. The two women fight about the food, and Helen tells her mother that George wants to marry her. At first, her mother isn't sure about the idea. But when she finds out that George is rich, she tells Helen to go ahead with it. I'm sorry, Ma. I just can't. Says Helen. I don't feel love for him. Her mother laughs at this and says, love? What does that even mean? Will it keep you warm? Will it give you food? Will it cover the expenses? Still, Helen says that George has fat hands and is always pressing on her, but her mother brushes this off and calls her crazy. Ma, Helen yells, if you tell me that again I'll kill you. She then launches into a short speech in which she admits that she might be crazy before finally asking her mother to forgive her. At the end of the scene, she chooses to marry George. The lights go out, and episode 3 begins with a faint jazz song. In episode 3, George and Helen are on their honeymoon and check into a hotel room. George is happy and loud, but Helen is nervous, quiet, and slow to warm up to her new husband. George tells her to calm down and asks what's wrong with her. Nothing to be scared of, he tells her. You're with your husband, I know. He then puts her on his lap, puts his hand on her knee, and kisses her on the neck. He tells her to calm down as she moves around. Even though George says she shouldn't have to hide her body anymore, she gets up to change her clothes. She goes into the bathroom and shuts the door. She's crying when she comes out. She tells George that she misses her mother, which confuses him because she had just told him that she was glad to spend time away from the old woman. I want her right now, says Helen. I'd like someone. As George tries to make her feel better, the lights go out. Helen is in a maternity ward in episode 4. When the nurse asks her how she's doing, she doesn't answer and just shakes her head when she has to. The nurse asks, aren't you glad it's a girl? When Helen shakes her head, the nurse tells her to stop. When the nurse asks Helen if she needs anything, she points outside, where loud work is going on. The nurse can't stop the noise, though. When George gets there, the nurse tells him that Helen is getting stronger, and he says, of course she is. He then walks over to Helen and tells her to brace up and that he knows what she went through during labor because he was in the hall listening to her while she was in labor. 
he tells her, pull yourself together. Helen starts to choke and point to the door as he talks. George tells the nurse, she's got that gagging again, just like she did the last time I was here, and then he leaves, promising to come back the next day. The doctor comes in and tells her to try nursing and to start giving the baby basic food. Helen talks to herself for a long time after he goes with the nurse. She says things like, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. I've given in enough. I won't give in anymore. When the lights go out, the sound of work and an electric piano play until episode 5, when the lights come back on. Three tables are set up in a bar where episode 5 starts. Two guys are waiting for Helen and the phone girl, who are late, at one of the tables. One of the men, Mr. Smith, is having an affair. He is counting on his friend, Mr. Rowe, to keep Helen busy so that he can quickly spend some time alone with the telephone girl before running home to his wife. Helen and the girl who answers the phone finally get there. Helen likes Mr. Rowe right away, and he flirts with her until Mr. Smith and the girl who answers the phone leave to have sex. When they are alone at the table, Mr. Rowe tells Helen that he was once held captive by thieves in Mexico and that in order to get away, he put stones in a bottle and beat the men to death with it. Not long after that, they go to Mr. Rowe's room, where episode 6 takes place. When they get there, they hear a hand organ playing in the street, which makes it sound like they've just made love. Mr. Rowe tells her about Mexico and how people south of the United States feel more free. Helen suddenly realizes she's going to be late getting home, so she rushes to get her things together. Before she leaves, she notices a flower on Mr. Rowe's table and asks who gave it to him. He tells her he bought it himself because it reminded him of San Francisco, and the two talk about riding free in the woods around the Bay Area. Helen asks if she can take the flower with her after they kiss. Mr. Rowe says, sure, why not? When she leaves, music plays in the street until the start of episode 7, when it stops all of a sudden. In episode 7, Helen and George are in their living room reading their own newspapers. When George's phone rings, he finds out that one of his business deals has been completed. After he hangs up, he brags about how well it went and goes over to Helen. When he touches her, she jerks away. He says that she hasn't done that in a long time, but he always thought it was because she was pure. She says that's not true. Later, Helen sees a story about jewels and precious stones that gives her a panic attack. She puts her hands around her neck and says, I feel like I'm going to drown. George tells her to calm down and take a deep breath, but she can't get rid of the feeling. She asks, and what is death? Soon after, George reads a story about a revolution below the Rio Grande, and Helen hears Mr. Rowe's voice along with a hazy chorus of other voices repeating his words. I put small stones in an empty bottle, Mr. Rowe's voice, which isn't coming from his body, says. Stones, stones, precious stones, millstones, stones, stones, millstones, the group says over and over. As the voices mix, the sound of a hand organ gets louder. In the middle of this chaos, Helen jumps out of her chair and says, oh. Oh. The scene goes black, and the hand organ and voices keep playing over and over again until episode 8 starts. Helen is in court in episode 8. Her lawyer, the lawyer for defense, asks her questions in front of the jury, the judge, and press. Helen says she didn't kill her husband after the lawyer for defense asked her about it. She says that when she woke up the night George died, two big dark guys were standing over the bed. She says that before she could do anything, one of them hit George over the head with a bottle. Helen says that when the two dark guys ran away, she got towels to try to stop the blood from coming out of George's head. Soon, she realized that George was dead, so she called the police. After the lawyer for the defense is done, the lawyer for the prosecution takes the floor. His questions slowly showed that Helen's story was not very clear and that she had trouble proving or even remembering some details. He shows her the broken bottle that was used to kill George and says that it's strange that no fingerprints are on the glass. At night, Mrs. Jones, you usually wear rubber gloves, don't you? 
She says she used to do this before she got married, but she doesn't have the gloves anymore. The lawyer says this isn't true by showing a pair of gloves that were in her house on the night in question. As he shows the jury other proof that makes Helen look bad, he shows them a bowl that he says Helen brought home a year ago in the spring. He says the bowl had a water lily in it, but Helen says this is not true. Lastly, the lawyer shows a statement from Mr. Rowe saying that he gave her the water lily and that she has been to his apartment almost every day since they first met. As the lawyer keeps reading, Helen gets more and more upset until she finally blurts out, I did it. Yes. I did it. When the judge asks her why, she says, to be free. The court is over, and the lights go out. The sound of telegraph machines fills the air. In the ninth episode, Helen is in jail and a priest is saying prayers for her. Two barbers come into the cell and shave her head so that the electric chair can make clean contact with her head. Helen fights back and yells, I won't let this humiliation happen to me. No. I'm not going to give up. Don't bother me. God, I'm never going to be alone. Always having to give in, to give in. I won't give in, even though I'm going to die. Not yet. Her pleas are ignored, and one of the barbers tells her, you'll give in, my lady. You'll give in until the end. Before Helen is led to the chair, she hears a jet flying above. The thought of flight makes her think of freedom, and she says that the only time in her life when she was truly free was when she killed George. As the priest straps her into the chair and says prayers, she is brought to it. Somebody, shouts Helen. Somebody. She never gets to the end of the word, and the priest keeps praying quietly until the curtain falls. About the author. Sophie Treadwell was born in 1885. She was the only child in her family and grew up in Stockton, California. When she was very young, her father left the family and moved to San Francisco. During the summers, the future writer went to see him there, which was the first time she saw a play. When she went to the University of California at Berkeley in 1902, she started writing plays and playing in them. She also started writing for the San Francisco Examiner as a college reporter. This was just one of the jobs she had to help pay for school while she was still in school. During this busy time, Treadwell also had to deal with mental sickness. She had to fight worry for the rest of her life, which sometimes led to long hospital stays. In 1906, Treadwell graduated from college and married a sports writer for the San Francisco Bulletin. She and her husband then went to New York, where the young writer got active in the fight for women's right to vote. She strongly believed that women should be free and independent, so she and her husband lived apart in the city while she quickly made links with important modernist artists. During this time, Treadwell did some of her most important reporting and writing for the theater. During this time, she also became known for her amazing undercover and immersive journalism and for fighting for writers' rights. By the time she died in 1970, she had written four books and almost 40 plays, some of which she produced and directed herself and put on Broadway. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.